Hello, my name is Alex and this presentation is called Action Against Invasive Species. Now, when we think of the words alien invasion, most of the time our mind conjures up images of beings from another world coming to our world and destroying it and destroying us in the process. Now, what's weird is that alien invasions actually do happen on Earth but not in the way you'd actually think of when you think of the words alien invasion. These alien invasions happen in unique ecosystems filled with unique plants and animals. And these alien invaders are actually other plants and animals that are not native to these ecosystems. And if we don't stop these alien invasions, then we could be seeing some local extinctions and maybe even some major extinctions in the near future. Now, I myself live in an ecosystem that is overrun with non-native animals, so I do have some experience in this topic. So throughout this presentation, I will be going over the places that have been invaded, the specific animals that have invaded, um, what are the long-term consequences of not doing anything, and perhaps some solutions to the problem. Now, let's talk about some of the places that have been invaded. Now, on this planet, the most fragile ecosystems are islands due to their isolation. And islands are very susceptible to invasive species. Two examples are the islands of New Zealand and Mauritius. In the case of New Zealand, most of its population or native population to be precise, is made up of flightless birds. And these flightless birds have had their numbers depleted due to the introduction of invasive animals, mostly mammals, like rats and cats. And in the case of Mauritius, they've had most of their native fauna just completely disappear off the face of the earth in the 17th and 18th century due to the introduction of pigs and rats. Now in the case of Florida, the reason it has become a hotbed, and I mean a literal hotbed for invasive animals is two reasons mostly. It has very relaxed laws on exotic pet ownership and you know private zoos. So a lot of these exotic animals either end up getting released or escape into the wild, or they end up thriving as a result of Florida's subtropical climate that allows for birds, snakes, and even primates to survive in. Now, some specific animals that have invaded these ecosystems like New Zealand and Florida, and in the case of New Zealand, it, they, the main problem species is the cat because their population around the island is around 1.3 million. And most of them live in households, but a lot of them go feral and end up preying on the eggs of defenseless, flightless birds like the kiwi and the kakapo. And there's a problem in getting rid of them because, well, no one really wants to get rid of their house cat. And in the case of Florida, the main problem species is the cane toad. Due to the poisonous glands it has on its shoulder that prevents most predators from hunting it, because the poison can kill most animals if it gets into their system, which means their populations have soared, but they have caused many problems in urban areas due to the fact that many dogs and pets will end up accidentally eating cane toads, and you don't want that to happen, now do you? Now let's look at some of the long-term effects of these invasive animals. Invasive animals can oftentimes dominate or outcompete native animals because there's no natural predators to hunt them or stop them as opposed to where they would originally come from. And if they outcompete native animals, these native animals who have nothing to eat because these invasive animals are sometimes better at hunting or gathering resources than they are, they go extinct or their numbers dwindle. And as a result, the invasive animals, because they have nothing to keep them in check, they end up consuming a lot of resources and could end up having a hazardous effect on the entire environment as a whole. Some cases of this are the American pistol shrimp that were introduced into the rivers of Britain and ended up outcompeting the native crayfish that ended up 
almost going extinct. And another example is, once again, in Florida, where else do you think? Where Burmese pythons have been introduced and they have begun competing with and even hunting alligators. And the two species have now become competing with each other over dominance over the Florida ecosystem, the entire Florida ecosystem. Now, it's not all doom and gloom. As I said before, there are some potential solutions to this problem, such as urging local politicians to take action against these invasive species and their introduction, such as in the case of Florida, passing laws that could prevent people from owning exotic pets or owning exotic zoos, and perhaps maybe giving more funding to, na to national parks or places that are very important to the environment to protect animals. But we could also be doing our part in protecting our native environments because well, we don't want to see, who wants to see our local swamps in Florida get destroyed by pythons. Now, we could start turning the hunting of invasive species into a profitable business as in Puerto Rico, where invasive iguanas are now hunted for their meat and sold to restaurants, which has become a very lucrative business now. Or we could just avoid hunting native species in general, which could not only help their numbers grow, but it could also help them fight back and potentially hunt the invasive species. So yeah, just hunt more invasive animals. And I say we should be doing our part in the end because ultimately we are responsible for the introduction of a lot of these invasive animals into these ecosystems. So we kind of have to fix our mess. So yeah, thank you for listening to me. And I would like to thank my sources, Environment Guide, the National Conservancy, Department of Conservation, Te Papua Awatabai. I hope I, I hope I really hope I spelled that right. And Florida and Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission. Thank you, everyone, and I hope you have a nice day. Peace.